So uh, I'm going to go over how to create a, an HDR high dynamic range panoramic. Um, so I'm going to use um, Photomedix Pro for uh, doing the high dynamic range merging of the images. And then uh, I'm also going to use uh, Auto Panel Pro to then stitch, do the final stitching of the images for the panoramic. Um, and throughout this whole process, I'm also going to use uh, ACDC Photo Studio, in this case Ultimate 20, uh, 2019, for the asset management, uh, creating directories, moving files, um, converting files, converting the RAWs to TIFFs, and uh, that sort of thing. So uh, what I did was uh, I, I have a series of images that I took uh, at Niagara Falls. These images were actually taken on a bridge that's between the U.S. side and the Canada side, Canadian side. Um, and so each series, each HDR series, is a series of three images. Um, that's that's one set. And and what I did was I had four positions of the camera, and at each position of the camera, I took uh, an HDR series of uh, minus two EV, zero EV, and then plus two EV. Um, so this these, this is the minus two as you can see here. Actually here, the exposure bias is minus two EV. This is zero. There was that was straight on a meter. And this is the plus two. Um, and so the very first thing that I want to do uh, is I, I'm going to operate on TIFF files. So what I want to do is convert these raw images. They're taken with a, a Nikon D500. Um, I want to convert these raw images to TIFF images because I want to use uh, uh, TIFF source images for Photomatix Pro. Um, and so I'm not going to do any uh, actual raw processing. I'm just going to allow Photomatix to uh, convert these to, to TIFF images. Um, this is really kind of just an example. Um, so let me do the hotkey for uh, batch convert file in ACDC. We're going to convert them to TIFF. Um, I'm going to kick this off. One of the, one of the uh, options is to place the resultant files into the same folder. I'm going to do that. Um, and so I'm going to kick this off there we go, and then so this takes a little while. This takes a little bit over a minute to do this. Uh, so I'm going to pause the video, and we will I'll return uh, when this finishes in about a minute or so. Okay, so I'm back. That took about a minute and 20 seconds. Uh, when I push this finish button, ACDC's uh, manage mode, the file uh, will update as it did here. Um, so these are going to be the files that we're going to going to actually operate on. So I, we we can hide these raw images. We don't really need to see them anymore. So we have two options here for um, for doing this. So we could either create a a panoramic for each exposure level. So meaning that I would stitch minus two all of, all four of the minus two images, stitch those together into a panoramic. Do the same thing for the zero EV images, and then again for the plus two, so that would give us three panoramics, and each panoramic would be at a different uh, exposure level. And then we could take those three and merge those to HDR. Uh, that's one option. That isn't actually the option that I use. What I normally do is I take a series of HDR images, I merge those to HDR, um, and I do that for every position of the camera. And so then I'll end up, in this case, I'll end up with four HDR images, and then I stitch those four HDR images. And that's what I'm going to do, and that's what I'm going to show. Uh, but in order to do that, I have to uh, run Photomatix Pro in a batch mode. And in order to run it in a batch mode, I have to attempt to process one series of images so that I can create a preset of all of the, the, the settings that I'm going to use for HDR so that when I, when I actually allow this to automate the system, uh, automate the process, I could use that preset. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I have uh, ACDC set up to open external editors and one of them is Photomatix Pro. So what I've done here is I've selected one position of the camera. So this is one HDR series, minus two, the zero EV value and the plus two. And now I'm going to open up Photomatix uh, with those three images. I'm going to merge them together, uh, make sure that the, the, the settings are correct. I did handhold this, so I'm going to leave that at, at uh, the handheld. 
and I'm gonna I'm gonna just um, go in here. So the whole point of doing this is to process one position. So I, I, right now I selected uh, the first position, but the but the, the the illumination of that of that scene was very similar. So I don't have to really worry about. Well, I can go with the center. Uh, position or or the this is the leftmost position and that should be representative of the entire panoramic. Um, so in photomatics here, we're going to go in here. I've already sort of done this, but um, I'm just going to show what settings or how to actually set a preset because we're going to need the preset when we automate the process. Um, so let me let's let this thing open it'll open up it'll actually open up in the last so that's the first position and that's I like that I like the way that looks so um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to save I have already saved actually um, the the set well here right so I, I adjusted all of these uh, the sliders to, to my liking I, I, I like the way this looks um, and then what what I did was I went in here and I said save preset and I named it um, JL Niagara 1. I usually uh, prefix my uh, uh, presets with JLs or my initials, and then in this case, Niagara 1. So I, I just wanted to show that, okay, yes, we have to go in, we have to, we have to actually do all of the HDR adjustments, and then save those as a preset, because we're going to use this preset later on. I'm not going to actually... Uh, write out the, of the file of this position because I, I'm going to allow the automation to do that. So we're going to exit this. Yes, we, 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 we don't, we're just going to exit. There we go. Okay, so now in order to do, in order to have Photomatics Pro find the appropriate files, we have to arrange these source images, these TIFF source images in, in the appropriate way. Um, and so the way that I like to do this is I create a subdirectory where these source images are, and I, I, I it, it, that's some type of a base. So I, I'm going to call it HDR base, and underneath that base, I'm going to create a directory for each exposure value. So that means that I'm going to create three folders: one called minus two, that's for the minus two EVs, and obviously. Um, create another one for the zero straight on no biasing no exposure biasing images and then the other one obviously is going to be plus two okay so let's go once we have those let's go back to the source images again we're looking at just the TIFF images and we're going to move these TIFF images into the appropriate subdirectory so let's open this up in ACDC this is the minus two that's a minus two that's a minus two that's a minus two I'm going to move these into the minus two directory okay and then I'm going to do the same thing for the zeros so this is easy enough okay so there's the four zero images those are going to get moved into their directory and then finally obviously we're going to do the plus twos okay so now that we have those images set up in in their appropriate directories and so let's double check it uh, we're in the plus two directory uh, this is plus two plus two plus two plus two I'm just double checking them uh, let's look at this is the zero one this is zero zero and zero since those two are correct that must mean that the minus two is, is correct as well and then so the process of the batch process in photomatics we're going to have to give it a place to dump the resultant file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another directory at this HDR pano uh, uh, level. And I'm going to just call this, um, since, we're, since we, we're calling this HDR pano1, I'm going to call this HDR um, pano1 output. And I'll show you where that shows up in a moment. Um, actually, right now. So let's open. Photomatics again. Okay, so now this time we're gonna we're gonna set up for doing the batch processing. So we're gonna hit batch bracketed photos. It'll bring up the batch bracket um, options window. 
Um, and so let's start off with source. So this is going to this is the reason that we put those in the in, in the plus two zero minus two directories. So let's select the directory. Um, so you navigate to the appropriate directory. They happen to be on my media drive, um, and they're in this directory. See, as we can see. So this is why I created this just basic holding directory. Um, so that's the directory we want. So I'm going to select that. Um, and then we're going to filter by TIFF files. It, I, I purposely did these in their own directory because I, I wanted to isolate them. But we need to say, you know, it's best to say what kind of files are you looking for. You've got to make sure that process subfolders is, is, is clicked. And we want to group by exposures. And when we do this, this combination, the bracketed selection knows already that we're going to do three images at a time because it knows that the directory that we selected here had three directories under it and each directory is holding an exposure uh, compensation set of images. Um, so it'll merge three at a time and that's exactly correct. Um, uh, then we're going to put it, uh, put the output someplace and that someplace is going to be in a custom location and that's why I created that output directory. So again you navigate to the appropriate place. Uh, in this case, this is the appropriate place. This is the this is that directory that I put for this specific purpose of when this batch process runs, its output is going to be four files. They're going to be an HDR for each position of the camera. So let's say OK there. We want them to be 16-bit TIFF images. Um, and then one other thing is now we're going to say use which preset and this is where this is the reason that we created our our preset why we why we went in and pre made an adjustment and so this is the this is the preset that we want to use um, and and we can leave these uh, I, I sometimes don't do ghost removal but the Nikon D500 has a really nice um, uh, HDR uh, mode where you can uh, fire off images very quickly. It shoots 10 frames a second. So uh, I had it set up to do auto bracketing and I, I had it set to high so it went boom boom boom. It, I mean it was three images really quick which which means that in between each image, image even though we're taking a shot of Niagara Falls and water there's very little mo movement between them. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna still allow it to try to try to do that, uh, do the, the anti-ghosting. Uh, and so that's about it. I, I, that, those are all the settings we need. It found the source images, we're giving the destination, and we're saying uh, render with the preset that we created earlier. So I'm going to say run. So we're going to kick this off, and, and we're going to say load, loading three images. Now these three images are coming from the minus two directory. So it's going to use the JL Niagara 1 uh, preset and then it's going to process its image and it's going to deposit it in this location. And so it's going to do this for all of the images. So we should see this loading three images four different times. And I'm, I'm going to pause the um, I'm going to pause the video because there's, th this is just repetitive and so we're just going to sit here. So I'll come back once the processing is done. Okay so it's almost done. It's working on its last set of images. Um, so I'm just going to kind of, it's been about uh, a little bit over two minutes, about 2.15-ish, and it's almost done now. Um, and anyway, I'll show you what it looks like when it actually does complete so you can tell when it's done. Um, at the end of the processing, obviously not only this progress bar, but there's also a little link will show up, and it should be the same as this destination that we picked, that we chose there. Um, so hopefully just a couple more seconds. Grand total time now has been about 250. There we go. So it's finished. This run comes back. Um, so we're pretty much done with the HDR merging. And so now we can actually close this off. And now the output directory should contain four images and it does. Here's the four images. And these are the HDRs that were created at each position of the camera and so now all we have left to do is to merge those into into a panoramic 
And so I'm going to select those four images and I'm going to use another one of the editors that I had set up, which is AutoPano Pro. Um, and it's used for stitching panoramics. Um, and so I'm going to open those up. And I have a different video on how to set up uh, ACDC with external uh, 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 editors, in case you're interested. Um, and so this isn't really a, a uh, tutorial on how to use AutoPano Pro or how to use um, Photomatics, but uh, just how to sort of do the whole process of doing this. Um, now remember these were handheld. I did not use a panoramic uh, tripod head. So to get excellent, fairly low RMS is pretty good. Um, Auto Pano allows you to uh, crop out all of the, the, the uh, extraneous parts of the image. I'm going to move this up just slightly. Um, double clicking on it does the cropping. I mean, this is just for demonstration purposes to see, you know, how to do this. So, uh, but let's do it. Let's actually render it. Uh, one thing that I do do like to do is uh, have its output format 16-bit TIFF, and I like to go between two and three hundred um, dots per inch. And I I do send it to the desktop, and I'll show you why I do that in a second. I don't normally put a lot of icons on my on my desktop, um, so it makes things like this easy to find on the desktop. Um, so this is going to take uh, a little bit of time and, and, and once again what I'll do is, uh, it's not going to take that long actually because this is like four images, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause and I'll come back uh, when it's finished. Although it might be, nah, it'll take, it'll take a few seconds. So I'm going to pause. Okay, I'm back. That took about 50 seconds, so not even a minute. So it took less than a minute to do this. Um, and so we're pretty, we're, we're done with these apps. I'm not going to save that as a project. Um, now, here's the, here's the, this is why I do it to the desktop because it, it shows up here and it's easy. So here's the output directory. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this and I'm going to move it to this directory. Um, seems like a logical place to put it is, is in the, the same output directory, the HDR out, output directory. Um, so it's just moving the file. It's probably a big file, it's like 500 meg or something. Um, and let's maximize this and let's take a take a preview of it take a look at it and it is a pretty big file it's 288 megabytes um, and there we have it um, that's the high dynamic range panoramic it, it I think it turned out pretty pretty nice the um, the, the, the feel of what it looks like is all dependent on what you do in, in HDR and what preset you set. And, and this is just for demonstration purposes, but I think it looks pretty good. And then you could do further editing on this now. This is just a normal TIFF image. And there you have it. That's it.